One of the ways researchers work to understand how much opportunity a place or society offers is by measuring economic mobility, which is a way of looking at how much a person or family can get ahead or fall behind over time. A common way of studying this is to compare a person's income to that of their parents at the same age. This is called intergenerational mobility. For example, if a father worked on a factory floor at age 35, but his daughter became a doctor and was making more at the same age, we would call that upward intergenerational mobility. When we adjust for inflation and compare someone's present income to their parents' income dollar for dollar, we're looking at absolute mobility. When we measure how someone's position in the income distribution changes over time compared to everyone else in society, that's relative mobility. In the United States, men's mobility compared to their fathers has slowed because of declining opportunities in some traditionally male occupations. But family mobility has stayed more stable because of the wages of women entering the workforce. On average, most families' absolute earnings have increased over time because of the country's economic growth. However, because most people stay in about the same economic position as their parents, rates of relative mobility are much lower. We can look at this by lining up everyone from lowest income to highest income and breaking them into five equal groups. If there was no mobility and everyone stayed in the same position as their parents, each of the bars in the graph would be made up of people who started life in that group. But if everyone had an equal chance of ending up in each of the five income groups, the vertical bars would be evenly split into fifths. In reality, the graph looks like this. There is mobility, but most people stay near their family's position in the distribution. This is especially true for the richest families and for the poorest, because just as wealth can be inherited, so can poverty. We can think of these numbers as averages across a whole population, but exceptions to these averages matter. In the US, mobility rates for African American and Hispanic people are generally lower than for non-Hispanic whites. And remember how someone born into the richest 20% of families is likely to stay in that group? That's far less true for African Americans born into the richest 20%. And even those in the middle class are less likely to stay there. There are many reasons for this, including systemic racism, residential segregation, fewer education opportunities, and policies that have made it more difficult for African-American families to accumulate and keep wealth. And it's not just some groups of people who experience lower levels of mobility. There are also areas of the country where it's much harder for someone born into a lower-income family to work their way up. In the U.S., mobility is much lower in the southeastern states and Rust Belt states of the upper Midwest than in the northeast, west, and on the west coast. The communities people are in and the policies that shape those places matter if we want to promote opportunity. Research has shown that meeting people's needs for quality nutrition, health care, and education can create a more economically vibrant society that is accessible to everyone, regardless of where they started out.